questions you wanted us to look at before I start with combining functions and doing compositions, etc. I just wanted to check from you guys whether there's anything in particular you wanted us to look at before we proceed. If there's nothing, which I don't see in the chat yet, then um, I will then just just construct some example of examples of functions, and I'll also use your textbook. And then just ask you some questions pertaining to where this function is defined. OK, uh, so I just want to share the whiteboard with you guys. I'll uh, construct a few functions and ask you where they defined or not, or which values they're not defined. So let me just share the whiteboard with you guys. So so let me just give this a heading and call it. Um, it's, it falls under section in this older version of the book that I have. It's for it's called, it, fall, it falls under section 2.6. But I suspect you guys work with a newer version, but it's not a big issue. Um, the elements of the discussion should be consistent throughout. So I'll call it combining functions. And with combining functions, I mean uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. And then there's also this notion of composition of functions, OK? Combining functions. So let me just write this. But I first want to check with you guys your understanding of the following. So, so I want to write down a few functions and ask you for which values of x these make sense, okay? So um, let me start with the function, say, let me call it f of x equal to, we normally say y equal to f of x equal to whatever. Let me call this one <coughs> the square root of x. And let me call this one, um, I'll probably give you five or six functions. Just want to have a sense of your guys' understanding. And then, uh, and then I will check with you guys. I probably could have called it F subscript one, F subscript two, et cetera, but it's fine. We understand the context. And then uh, let's say, yeah, this this interesting one. Uh, and perhaps five. Yeah, I think a one function was. Um, let's see quickly. Uh, let me introduce this one also. Uh, let's check quickly. F of X equal to cross X maybe. And uh, they're relatively simple functions. Uh, I'm thinking of another one. Uh, I think it's OK. All right. OK, guys, so so suppose I ask you for number one there that I wrote down, um, the square root function. So, so basically, I want to know from you, oh, as, as you look at the square root function, and in terms of your experience, where would that uh, for which values of x does it make sense? For which values of x uh, does it make sense that to speak of the square root function? Which values can x assume, or which values can x not assume? If you look at the first one. Um, um sir, can I try? Yes, yes, by all means, yeah, I'll be happy. Um, since since there is, is it square, Mtokozizi? Mtokozizi, yeah, no? It's Mtokozizi, yes, sir. Mtokozizi, okay, sure. Yes, sir. since it's a it's a square root, uh, uh, that means uh, the it, for negative values it will be undefined. Sir. Okay. So that right. means that means um, for all the positive values, sir, for Good. this function is a, is going Good. to exist. Good. Great, thanks for that. So for all positive, but but and what about zero, Mtokozizi? What about zero? Um, zero is included, sir. Good, good. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear you say that from the onset. Okay. Perhaps you said it. People, I agree with him, but I must also say this. I must also say this. In fact, I should have said it. And here we suppose we are talking about real values of X. Of course, if X were to be negative under the square root, we talk of the complex values, okay, which is also defined. Okay. But for us, since we speak of X as a, we think of X as a real number, and um, um, it's, 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 it's a non-complex number, it's a real number. Remember the complex numbers, if you guys have encountered the complex numbers, it's numbers that involve the square root of negative numbers. So uh, those are 
those are actual numbers they exist, but we just give a name to them complex numbers, okay? Because of the negative square root, uh, the negative um, under the square root, okay? The negative under the square root. So those functions, and as you guys proceed with higher mathematics, you will actually encounter them, especially in your third year co course, complex analysis, and maybe earlier. But then you'll just call it complex numbers initially, and then later on you call it complex analysis. Um, so, but for our case, we're working with real numbers. So yeah, it makes sense to speak that that uh, of x as obtaining x will only be, make sense if it's greater or equal to zero, right? So in this case, uh, we we can probably write it more formally formally by saying the domain of x is the set of x such that x is greater or equal to zero. So more formally, we can write this as so. Uh, in terms of domains and so on, you can just say more formally um, the domain of F. Sometimes they say DOM F, or sometimes they, they just say D of F. I'm not sure what notation you guys are using. It's the set of X. Sometimes they use uh, the vertical bar, sometimes they use the colon. The set of X such that X is greater or equal to zero. And of course, uh, you can say the set of X and element of the real numbers. Uh, maybe for the sake of completeness, uh, you can say uh, it's the set of X and element of the real numbers such that. Or if it's clear from the context, you just say the set of X such that X greater or equal to zero. It doesn't do, doesn't make much difference because, of course, we're speaking. You can use that notation or you can use that notation. Okay. Right, thanks for that. Um, and with regard to number two, what would you say there? Number two. Can I try? Yes, you may. Yeah. Who is speaking now? Um, Relev Habuta. Oh, oh, uh, Relev Relev Habuta, ne? Relev Habuta. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I think. X is an element of real numbers, but okay. X should not be equals to zero because if it's zero, then the whole thing becomes undefined. Okay, oh, let me just see my pen gate. This pen of mine has been causing problems to me. Let me just see, I don't know. I suspect the settings, I must look at the settings again. Great, I agree with you, Ms. Bota. She says that X can assume any value there, guys, but it cannot be equal to zero. So it can be any real value except zero. So, so yeah, you can write it more formally as the domain of f. So those values for which x are defined, x is defined. That's the domain of f. So these are the values along the x-axis in the Cartesian plane, right? It's the set of x, of course, an element of the real numbers. So it's for all real numbers. So you can just say the set of x because it's clear from our context. And yeah, she said that X cannot be equal to zero. So all other real values will do. But we, of course, we don't um, we don't permit def, um, division by zero. OK, so we don't permit a zero in the denominator. Otherwise, it comes undefined. OK, so in this case, we say the domain of F is the set of X in the element of the real numbers such that X is not equal to zero. OK, right. thanks for that. Then can anyone venture to answer number three for us? Number three. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, great. Who's speaking now? Uh, it's Panache. Uh, Panash. Panache. Yes. Okay, yes, I've, I know, I know. I've seen your name before, yeah, Panache. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, great. Okay, okay, sir. I would say uh, X is an element of all real numbers uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Great, great. Of course, when you say, you see what you are saying, you're making the same statement. If you say this to me, you say this to me, right? And you're saying this to me, it has the same meaning. This is exactly this. Means the same as this here, okay? So we can just say X is an element of the real numbers. That's all. Okay, it's the set of X such that X is an element of the real numbers. Or you can just write it like this. So you can write that, or you can write that. 
So X is an element of that set of real numbers. Or you can just say that X, ah, or you can say that X is greater than negative infinity and less than positive infinity. Okay, that's the same statement. Thanks for that, Panash. Okay. Okay, and then, and then, of course, guys, you can see here that, can I ask you uh, another question, perhaps, guys? Let me call this Y equal to. If Y equal to F of X is equal to X squared, and we agree with, with Panache's statement here, yeah, we agree with this. Can I ask you, what values can Y assume, supposing that X can assume all real values? Which values may Y, uh, is, 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 is Y allowed to, to assume in that case? So we agree with Panache's statement here. Yeah? We agree with his statement. But now I'm asking, so those are the values for X. That's, that's permitted. Okay, it's all real values for X. So that being the case, if Y is equal to F of X equal to X squared, the question is, what must the range be? So the range refers to the set of Y values, okay? And the domain refers to the set of X values. So I'm asking, which Y values can this function, Y equal to F of X equal to X squared assume? Which Y values can assume? Can Remember, Y it. depends on X, okay? Where can I try, sir? Okay, who is that speaking now? Tim Togozizi, sir. Oh, Togozizi, yeah. Thank you, yes, sir. Togozizi, no problem. Um, sir, um, uh, as we can see that this is a um, quadratic, um, or yes. if, I, if, I, if I may call it. A, yes, a, quadratic function, yeah. Quadratic yes, function. sir. So, um, the, 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 it's, it's going, it's a smiley graph. And then, um, so that means um, from all the turning points going, uh, whether it's turning, it's it's going up or going down. I'd say so. It's gonna depend on the on the graph. But in this case, it's from zero to positive because it's an x squared. Say. So the great. turning point is zero and zero. Say. Great, great. So what he's saying in more in more uh, in, the, in the in the in the appropriate jargon, he's saying the y values that can that it can assume must be greater or equal to zero. Okay. So it's unbounded also. Of course, it's less than infinity and greater or equal to zero in this case. So yeah, so it's less than infinity. So the Y values, so for this thing, number three, so let me just write it down below here, guys. For number three, I want to exhaust this. So if Y is equal to F of X, equal to this quadratic function, okay? Uh, we know we know this function. We know its behavior. We can draw it. In fact, uh, maybe some people like, some people prefer a visual perspective of this. But this is how it will look. So there we in the Cartesian plane. Uh, so there's my x-axis. There's my y-axis, and we know that its behavior is something like this. There's the turning point there. Okay. Uh, this is the function y equal to f of x. This is the graph of the function. Sorry. This is the graph of the function y equal to f of x equal to x squared, okay, right? And, and as Mtokazizi said, you can see the y values. If the y values are the, along the vertical line, the vertical axis there, you can see that the smallest value that y can attain is zero, and then it becomes unbounded, okay? So here, yeah, the range, what we call the range, range of f, is the set of y such that y is greater or equal to zero. So it's unbounded, okay? So of course, less than infinity, greater or equal to zero. Because if you put any negative value into there, it gets squared. If you put zero into there, zero squared is zero. If you put any positive value into there, it's positive, okay? So you can see that above the x-axis, on, on and above the x-axis, y is positive or zero. Okay, you can see that. Okay, thanks for that, Dr. Zizi. Then, um, is there anyone who would venture to answer number four there? Um, can I try, um, Doc? Yeah, just with regard to, who am I speaking to now? Um, how? Um, is it uh, Lindy Way? Lindy Way? No, sir. Mohau. Mohau. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. 
Okay, Mohan. Okay, Mohan, no problem. Uh, guys, can I just make a request? Um, which is what I normally do if people enter the space where I'm working. I normally switch off my mic, okay? Uh, can I just request you guys to maybe switch off your mics if there are people interfering with your piece there and your mathematical thoughts and stuff? Otherwise, they'll impact on us too, okay? Thanks. Okay, Mal, well, I give you the floor then. Just uh, oh. with, with, with regard to the X values, right? For number yes. four. Yes, okay, Doc. Um, aren't we going to say um, X is the element of real numbers such that X is equal to, uh, it's greater than or equals to three? Great, great. That's it. It's pretty much like this. Can you see that? Same, same, same kind of notion. Same kind of notion. Of course, in this case, there was a shift along the x-axis to the right. Can you see that? There's a shift to the right in this case. Okay. So in this case, she's she's correct when she says, here is the set of x and element of R such that x is greater or equal to three. She allows for three to be included there because three minus three is zero in pretty much the same way as we have this one, x is greater or equal to zero. So that's plausible. And then every other positive value is allowed. You can get the square root of that. And by the same token, because of its shift to the right by three units, now um, this means that x must be greater or equal to three. If x was less than three, then you'll have the square root of a negative number, and we're not dealing with complex numbers in this case here, okay? Okay, thanks for that, Mao. Um, can I, can I ask you a question, guys? Um, um, for number four, just to check with you, so this was number three. Can anyone venture, is there anyone who would like to venture an answer with regard to the range of that function, the range of f? So, so supposing all this, supposing all this, uh, I want to know from you um, what are the y values that this function uh, can assume, number four, but I'm referring to number four there, okay? What are the y values? Given that x is provided, x is greater or equal to three. Remember, y depends on x, let me call this y. y depends on x. So I want to establish from you what y values are permissible for given that x is greater or equal to three, which y values are permissible, okay? Yes, anyone? So now I'm asking for the range of f, supposing that x, in fact, when we know that x is greater, because not supposing x is greater or equal to three, what are the y values? Uh, can I try, my name is Lagato. Oh, okay, Lerato, you may, yeah? Um, y is going to be positive numbers, sorry, greater than or equal to zero. Great, great. Again, people, uh, y will be greater or equal to zero. In fact, if I were to graph um, this function, the function would look something like this. Let me try and graph it before I write on the range, okay? She said, she said, uh, it's a set of y, an element of the reals, such that y is greater or equal to zero. That's what she said, basically. So it's a set of y and element of the real such that y is greater or equal to zero. And if you look at that graph, guys, it looks something like this. Let me the graph of that function. Something like this. Okay, so there's the y-axis. There's the x-axis. And it goes something like this. Maybe not that sharp, but it's fine. And this here is the point three, okay? And you can see that the graph of that function is above the x-axis, it's on or above the x-axis, okay? Hence, we say that y is greater or equal to three, uh, greater or equal to zero, right? So it's positive or zero, okay? So there's your square root function, square root of x minus three, okay? Great, thanks, thanks for that. Right, so then consider number five there, guys. Anyone would like to venture uh, what x values this can be? Can can uh, the the values that x may assume? Yeah. 
Anyone guess? I'm gonna go again. Again, okay. give it a try. Zero and three sixty. Okay, so I'm asking. So I'm asking. So for which uh, real values of x does for which real values of x do f of x equal to sine x make sense? Okay. For which real values of x do uh, f of x equal to sine x make sense? Hi, Okay. Isaac, can I try? Okay, who's speaking now? He's speaking to Mahoto. But I just Mahoto. want to check. Before, Mahoto, before I entertain you, Dorato, what was your answer again there? Eh? I don't think it's wrong, but I had said 0 to 360. Okay. And yeah. what about values beyond 360? That's why I don't think it's wrong. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think you're partially correct. You're not wrong, you're partially correct. Okay, Mahatso, maybe you can improve on that. Um, so according to my understanding, I think yes. X is an element of real numbers. Great. Great. To X, Great. Um, negative infinity Great. is less Great. than X, and X is greater than eight. I, I think that's what, because I checked for sign, you can okay. put in negative and positive numbers. Yes, and zero also, right? So guys, listen. So we not only speak in the context of degrees here, we speak of radians also, right? Remember, we can convert degrees to radians and, and vice versa. So um, we can speak of X as a real number, the sine of X, sine of a real number. Uh, if you put your calculator in RAD mode, RAD, radian measure, and that, that allows for X for you to determine the sine of a real number, okay? Um, but you must put it, you must shift it from DEG mode to RAD mode, then you can calculate. For example, if you say in RAD mode, if you say to me sine of pi in RAD mode, you get zero. Now this pi represents 180 degrees. So it's pi radians. So it's sine of 180 degrees. And you and you guys know that the sine of 180 is equal to zero. So um so in this case, you are you are you are correct that x can assume any real number. It's not it's not a problem. It's fine. It's defined for all real numbers that function. Okay, right, great. By the way, question: What is the range of f of x equal to sine x? Y equal to f of x equal to sine x. What is the range here again? So we, we know what the X values are. The X values are all real numbers between, well, equivalent statement. They're all the reals between negative infinity and positive infinity, okay? All right. So can I ask you, what is the range of F here? Um, so can I try, say, Tim, to lose yes. a second? Yes, you may, yeah. Um, is it, is it, is it uh, oh, because it's easy again, okay? Yes, sir. So it's okay. uh, it's positive one and can negative I, one. So. Can I just can I just say there's someone? Sorry, I'm there's someone that there's someone that uh, we have uh, a view to your room, okay? Maybe you want to switch off your camera. I'm not sure who the person is. Guys, please um, switch off your camera. It's Harriet M. Who's got her camera on? Harriet. Yeah, Harriet M. That's all okay. I can see. Okay, thanks for that, Elisma. Uh, Harriet M, do you mind switching off your camera? Because we have a bird's eye view of your space there. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, sorry for that. It wasn't as easy, right? Yes, easy? sir. Yeah, sorry for yeah. that. So, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so for, for for the range, sir, uh, it's going yes. to be um positive one and uh, it's going to be negative one and positive one, sir. So. Right. So it's a set of y, an element of the real numbers such that y lies between positive one and negative one. You guys remember the behavior of the sine graph, how it uh, how it, it's it's like a wave function. It's a wave function. But you will see the upper bound is one and the lower bound is minus one. Okay. Uh, if you were to draw that graph again, uh, let me just draw a sample of that graph for you. Uh, draw a sample of that graph for you. 
So there's the x-axis, there's the y-axis, and correctly, he says it can't go below unless you are multiplying in front by some number here. That's another story, but we are keeping it as sine x. And, uh, and then there's one above. So, um, and then, and then, and then there's minus uh, 180, there's positive 180, and there's 360. Uh, so, so let me just see. Uh, so there's nine, minus 90, minus 180, minus, so this is 90, sorry guys, 90. Uh, and then so forth. Let me just draw a sample of it for you. And this is 180 degrees, 90 degrees. So 90, we call 90 pi over two radians, okay? So, because we like to work with real numbers. So this 90 degrees here is pi over two, and the 180 roughly there, it's pi. But we know it goes on to the left and to the right, but I'm just taking a sample of that. And this is minus pi over two or minus 90 degrees, and this is minus pi radians. So, so the behavior will be something like this. Oh, just get this nicely, guys. Doesn't go below that and above that. Okay, it mustn't exceed one. It mustn't go. Uh, of course, yeah. I'm supposed to draw this nicer. Yeah. Let me just see. That one is one there. Sine of ninety is one, and the sine of minus ninety. That's uh, um, sine of minus ninety is minus one, right? Let me just see. Raise this here. I'm supposed to draw it much better than that. There's my minus one. So I just wanted to give an idea what's happening. There's the minimum value. And it's supposed to go continuously like that. So my drawing is not so nice. My graph is not so nice. Let's connect that. There's negative one. And there's it, okay? The sine of minus 90 or minus pi over two is negative one. And the sine of 90 or pi over two is one. Okay, there's just a sample of that graph. Of course, it goes on up to negative infinity and up to positive infinity. Of course, uh, as you can see, y is bounded above by one and bounded below by negative one. Okay, so just close off that. Okay, thanks for that, guys. Uh, okay, so I don't see any questions, so people seem to be fine. Can anyone venture an, an answer with regard to cosine? Um, can I try it again, Doc? Okay, no problem. Um, is it, it Mahal? Eh? Yes, yes, Doc. Okay. Um, it's going to be X is the element of real numbers such that X. um Y okay. um lies between negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, I want you to be very careful now with that bold statement now. So I agree wholeheartedly when you say to me, pretty much like the sine function, the domain of the cosine function, that is the set of x values, is such that x lies between minus infinity and positive infinity. You are right there, x an element of the real numbers, right? You are right. However, just try and recall again the upper and lower bounds for cosine. Just try and recall again. It's not unbounded, it's bounded. Remember the cosine graph, guys? Remember the cosine graph. So that's uh, that's the only point I disagree with you on. Ah, sorry, cosine. Cosine. I intended right. I always say something and I write something else. Sometimes. Okay. Remember cosine, guys. I'm gonna draw again. I'm gonna draw a sample of it for you. Um, let's just see quickly. So I'm drawing the cosine graph for you. Just a sample of it. So there's my x-axis, there's my y-axis again, and cosine is this kind of behavior. Uh, let me just see quickly. Uh, all right. All right, and it can go on. It can go on like that. Okay. So uh, let me just extend this to the left and extend that to the right again, just to allow for that. And then just remind you guys, because you guys know these things. It's just, uh, I'm just reminding you about stuff now. It's nothing new, yeah? Um, great. So yeah, zero, this is pi over two. 
pi root 2, right? And this is pi. Cosine of 180 is minus 1. And this one here, of course, you can check this one. You can just add a pi over 2 to that. So it's uh, uh, 3 pi over 2 here. 3 pi over 2 because it's pi plus pi over 2. So it's 3 pi over 2 here. Okay. And this one here is 2 pi, 360 degrees, 2 pi. Because the cosine of 2 pi is 1. Okay. So the upper bound, the upper limit there is 1. And the lower limit, um, just extend this negative y axis here, guys. Sorry. And the lower limit is minus 1. So pretty much like the sine function, it's bounded by minus 1 below. And by plus one above. Okay. There is it. And of course, you can extend these now to minus 90 and minus 3 pi over 2. And this here is minus 2 pi. But you can see that the upper and lower bounds are negative one and positive one. So that the range of, of, of the cosine function, provided you don't multiply in front here by some coefficient. The range uh, is pretty much, in fact, is exactly that of sine, okay? And the domain is exactly that of sine. It's just that there's a trans, there's a there's a shift, okay, in the graph of this function. It's exactly the same graph, it's just the shift, okay? So, um, so it shares the range with the sine function. So the range of the cosine function is the set of y such that y is greater or equal to minus one, less than or equal to one, okay? Right, thanks for that, guys. Uh, I trust Mao. Are you clarified with that? Are you fine? Okay. Uh, Bonolo. Okay, Bonolo. Say, uh, can I ask? Okay. Hey, why do we in why on the x axis do we include like pi? Because when you punch it into calculate, it gives like decimal numbers. Pi. Oh no. Yeah. You must you must put your calculator. Remember, you must put your calculator in, in RAD mode. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank put you. it in RAD mode. Then you'll see that the cosine of pi is minus 1, which is the cosine of 180. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Just make and, and now you must go back to DEG mode because we mainly work in DEG mode for other calculations. So just, just make sure that you put it back. It won't have that much of an effect. But I know we like to work in degrees and radians, but but of course you guys will realize as you proceed with the mathematics, we work exclusively within radian measure, okay? When we do angle calculations, when we deal with trig functions, etc. Okay? Right. Okay. Great. Hi, sir. Okay. Can I please ask? Okay. Okay, who's speaking now? Um Mahoto. okay. For the domain of for the domain of cosine, is it yeah. also exactly the same as the sine, or yes, can you write yes. something different? Ah, uh, no, it's exactly that. The domain and the range are exactly the same for the sine and cosine functions. Okay, exactly the same. Okay, uh, so so here is the here is the domain for cos. Here is the domain for sine. And like I said, uh, and like I said. Uh, the range, um, where am I now? This number five, number six. For number six, it shares this range of sine. So for number six, it has exactly the same range as that of sine. You can see there, like sine, yes, yeah, sine bounded above by one and bounded below by minus one. Cosine is also bounded above by one and below by minus one, okay? So the domains and ranges are exactly similar. Okay, great. Okay, guys, before we move on, are there any other questions for clarification? Any other questions? I don't see any questions in the chat, so I suppose you guys are fine. So then we can look at maybe combining functions and, um, you know, just looking at addition and subtraction and looking the when you combine the functions, how does that affect the domains and the ranges and so forth? Okay. And then we'll come to compositional functions, which is slightly more challenging, but it's still fine. And then we discuss the notion of one-to-one -one functions and the inverses. Okay, right. So, 
So in your book, you have the sums and differences in products and quotients, okay? So, so, so we look at that. Um, so I just want to make maybe say something about the algebra functions before I proceed uh, into some specifics. Uh, and I'll use some of the examples from your book, okay? So, so to proceed then, oh, my pen is up to its things again now. So let me just sort this out, guys. I think my settings are not fine. Great. So let me just make a, say something about the algebra functions quickly, guys. So, so then we're on the same page. Uh, you guys can still see the whiteboard. So let me just say something about the algebra functions. So that then we are pretty much on par um, algebra functions. So I'm talking here addition, subtraction, multiplication, and quotient. Right. So, so, so we say, so I'm just going to do it verbatim. So let f and g, so two functions, let f, let f and g be functions. And we know what the function is now. The functions with domains, with domains. A and B. Okay. Then the functions then the functions F plus G, F minus G, uh, F multiplied by G. Uh, and f over g for the quotient. So here's the product, here's the difference, here's the sum, and here's the quotient. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, sir. I don't know if I'm having trouble seeing your, 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 like I can't oh. see anything that you're writing. So I don't Is know it? if it's only okay. maybe People, my network uh, or something. This, yeah, possibly because. Yeah. I don't see anything in the chat. Not on my side either, Dr. C. Yes. You can't see? No. Oh. It, it, it shows that it's supposed to come unless there's someone else that can see. I could be having a network issue, okay. but there's okay. just a blank screen. Okay, okay. Because, okay, let me let me stop sharing and share again. Sorry for that. Yes. Thank, thanks, for, thank, thanks for telling me that. Otherwise, I was just going to go on talking to myself. Okay. I'm sharing the whiteboard again. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see. Yes. Thank okay, you. great. Um, but thanks, guys. Please, guys, please remind me about that in case you don't see something. Then I can check if others also don't see or what. If it's just you or what or me. But I suspect it was me in that case. Okay. So, 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 so now just to formalize things about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of functions, we're dealing with what we call the algebra functions. So here we say. F and G are functions with domains A and B. We know what the domain is now. It refers to the uh, to the set of X values or uh, in, in the domain along the X axis for this function uh, to, to make sense, to be defined. So F and G are functions with domains A and B. Then the functions, the sum of F and G, the difference of F and G, the product of F and G, and the quotient of F and G are defined as follows. And this is important, are defined as follows. Okay. Right. So this is how we define. So f plus g of x. So f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. So this is how we define them. This did it. Okay. Uh, and the domain here is the intersection of the domains. Okay. So the domain. Domain. Is the intersection of those domains. A intersection B, that's the domain. Okay. The domain is A intersection B. All right. Because F has domain A and uh, G has domain B. So the domain is the intersection. Okay. The domain for the sum. The domain of the sum is the intersection of the individual domains. Okay. Uh, by the same token, the difference between f and g of x is written as f of x 
minus g of x, pretty much like you'll deal with real numbers, okay? And here the domain is the same. It's just the intersection. So the domain of the difference is just the intersection of A and B, those, those uh, individual domains. And the product, the product of F and G, so F multiplied by G of X, it's just equal to F of X multiplied by G of X. And the domain here is again the intersection. And then lastly, the domain of that product is just A intersection B again. And then, and then finally, um, the domain. So if we have F over G, the quotient of F and G of X, well, we write this as F of X divided by G of X. And in this instance, the domain now is as follows. It's the set of X, an element of A, so X belongs to the intersection, right? But there's a, a condition such that G of X is not permissible to assume the value zero because we do not divide by zero, okay? So the domain is pretty much like the previous domains for the sum, the difference, and the product. The only other condition we impose on it is that G of X is not equal to zero. Sorry, not equal to zero, right? Otherwise, uh, you end up with division by zero, which is undefined, okay? Right. Good. So, um, later. Doc, can I add yeah. something? Okay, you may ask, yeah. Um, what about the domain for A, which is the union of B? How, how will um the graph of F of X in graph of G of X look like? Oh, in that case, when there's a union. Yes. Don't. Okay. Uh, then you probably have. Um, look, in that case, um, uh, the union. Well, it doesn't fall under the definition, but um, remember, yeah, you want the domain of both of them together, right? Because you have summed them up. So um, if you and and that domain must be applicable. That's why they say intersection. Intersection are elements that are common to F and G in the domain, right? So, so they must have common values because they will form one function, F plus G of X, eh? then now, now they, they're together, we put them together. So oh. it just makes sense for mm -hmm. the intersection, to speak of the intersection, because what is relevant for F must be relevant for G at the same time. With regard to the union now, um, I'm thinking of an example now to construct about that, but then it will fall outside our definition of of combining functions in this case. Okay. Oh, um, okay, Doc. You can you can make a statement, but you can't say then that that is the domain. You can have the union of two, but then you can't say that's the domain. And I'll show you what I mean with an example. Okay. I'll take an example from your book. We'll have uh, the sum, and then we'll have the intersection, and then I'll ask you what's the union of this. But of course, when you speak of union, it doesn't fall under the definition for the combined uh, domain of the sum, the difference, the quotient, or the product. Okay. So, but I'll show you what I mean with that. So for now, just remember these things involves inter in, involve intersection. And for the quotient, further to that, the denominator function cannot be equal to zero. But I'll show you what I mean now. now okay. So let's look at an example in your book, and let's see, and they've got two particular functions here, and my pen is uh, up to its stuff again. Let me just see quickly, guys. I don't know where I'm. Can you guys see anything on the screen now? Okay, let me just check the settings here. I don't know what's happening. Unless it's my network. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, Dr. Sias, and great, we see great. the screen. Okay, yes, uh, oh, my pen is acting up again. No, it's not right, please. Okay, great, okay, sure. I think I have to check the settings here. I keep on struggling. Okay, so so let me just give example one from your book. So I assume you guys can see, right? Okay, yes, now it's 19. 
example one. So let's say if, let's say if, for example one, let's say these two functions, and let's get and let's get so that will function f of x is equal to one over the square root of x minus two. We know what to do here. We know what's the the, the domain, and then we have a function g of x, and we're also familiar with this function. And this one is the square root of x. We know its domain also, right? And now, suppose I say to you, suppose I say to you, uh, let's find find uh, the sum f plus g, the difference, uh, the product f times g of x, f of x times g of x, and I say to you. Find also the quotient of the two and their domains and their corresponding domains. Okay, and their corresponding domains. Okay, because the domains will vary here and there. Okay, and their respective domains. Right, especially with this, especially with regard to the denominator function there. Okay, so zero cannot be part of that. So. Let's see, we know for the other three, it's just A intersection B, A intersection B. Um, but of course, with regard to the, the quotient function, there's an, an extra condition there, right? OK. OK, guys, question now. Let's, let's do the A part. Let's do the A part. Let's consider F plus G. Let's write down F. Um, so let me just maybe do this. Right. So I want us to find F plus G. And then maybe, and then we can do the rest and then look at their domains. Let us get f plus g. Let's get f of x plus g of x. You guys agree that f of x plus g of x is just 1 over square root x minus 2 plus square root x. You guys agree with that? You guys agree yes, with that? Yes, yeah, I think you yes, can sir. leave it there. Someone might be brave enough and then combine the two. That's fine. It's their business there. Uh, my question is, my question is, we already know that the domain, that the domain of this one, x must be greater or equal to zero, right? For this one. Do you agree, guys? Yes, sir. And for this yes. one, We'll write it down more formally for this one. What must the domain be? Uh, X must not be. Must not be. Not X be should, should be greater than 2. X must be? Greater than 2. We're looking at them separately, guys. No? We're looking at them separately. So I'm asking for this one. You said X is greater or equal to 0. I'm happy. Now, I'm, I, I remember I want the intersection ultimately. But first, I want to check the... The various, let me write down the domains quickly separately. Let me just write down the domains. So let me write here domain of F and then domain of G, okay? So, so um, this is G, guys. This is G, remember, this is G. This one is G and this one is F, okay? Right, so let's get the domain of Let's get the domain of f quickly. And then we check the intersection, OK? What is the domain of f there, guys? x should be greater than 2. x is greater than 2. two. Yeah. Definitely not, not equal to greater than 2, right? Yes. It's the set of x and element of reals such that x is greater than 2. I hope everyone can see that, guys. Because if, if it were equal to 2, then you'll have division by zero, which we can't allow. Can you see that? Okay. Right. Now let's look at the domain of G, which I already wrote down sort of in a in a very non-mathematical way. What is that one? Is the set of X such that? X is greater or equal to? Zero. Zero. Now my question is, what is the intersection of those? Um, so you wrote dom of f instead of oh, dom of g. G, man. Ah, oh, thanks, thanks for that. 
um, G, great stuff, thanks. And thanks sir, you. yes, um, um, the the it's from two um, it's from two uh, X is an element of uh, positive two sir, because from two uh, they are both um, in line sir. Okay, so wait, can I? Okay, just to establish. So, are you happy with this here? What you wrote down here? Are you happy with that? Yes. No, sir. Happy with that, right? I think it's yeah, negative, isn't it? Someone's making a comment there, guys. So, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing now, guys, I'm looking at the individual domains, right? I'm looking at the individual domains separate. I haven't, I haven't combined them yet, okay? I haven't combined them yet. So my question is, um, what is the, the domain of the sum, right? The domain of the sum of those functions, ultimately. But first I'm looking at it separately and then I'm looking at the intersection, okay? Right. Maybe I should, yeah. Uh, oh, okay guys, let me just add this one here. I should take this away from the example. Uh, sorry, just to not complicate things too much. Let me not complicate things too much. Let me take away the square root for now. Let me take this. Then, then we have another situation. So I just want to be consistent because uh, the function that I did was something else now. Okay, so uh, let's just use this. Yeah, let's stick to this function f as follows. You can have another function. Maybe as another exercise we can do that. But let's look at the simpler function. Okay. And then what does this become here? So guys, I keep I keep G the same. I just I just amended X. I took away the square root, okay? So what is the domain of F now? I took away the square root now, okay? I wanted this to be consistent because I created another function, but I realized the book doesn't it shows this function. But we can do that one also, doesn't <coughs> matter. So let us look at the function f of x equal to 1 over x minus 2 and keep the square root function. So what must happen here with the domain of f now? What must happen here now? It should be less than. It should be? X should be less than 2. Why less than 2? What value can x not assume here, guys? Um, so can I try, sir? Yes, yes, you may try. It's so easy, sir. Okay, it's it's gonna be all the element of x except two, say, because two yes. is going yes. to give us a, a zero. Sir. A zero. Okay. Sorry, guys. So I changed the function a bit. Sorry for that. I changed it a bit. But of course, I like the, the previous one that we did also. That's also fine. We can also consider that maybe afterwards. So, uh, so for now, let's just stick to a simpler version of things. So, so uh, I I agree with with Mtugazi. I agree. So the only value that x can have is two. This is not a square root function here in the denominator, so it's okay. You can have negative values, positive values, doesn't matter, okay? And of course, with this one, with this one here, x must be greater or equal to zero. So the common domain there, the domain of f plus g, so the common domain, domain of f plus g, is equal to the set of x such that x is greater, is not equal to 2, but x is allowed to be greater or equal to 0. Can you see that, guys? Okay. I must say and here. Yeah. I must say and. Let me say and rather than say comma. Let me say and. So there's a restriction on that. So though x can be greater or equal to zero, we do not allow x to be equal to two. Otherwise, it will violate this intersection. Okay. There's it. So so everything changes at two. You can assume any value, right? But also it must be positive or zero, but it cannot be two. So now there's a shift from this one. This one said this one said only x cannot be equal to x cannot be equal to two. So it included negative values for x. Can you see that? This year included negative values for x and positive values. This one here 
only includes positive values in zero. So the intersection now will say to you, look, X must be greater or equal to zero. So it must be greater than N equal to zero. But when it is greater or equal to zero, it must not e be equal to two. That is the intersection. So the intersection is more restrictive. It restricts that function. This one, like I said here, allowed for negative values. This one only allows for positive values because it makes sense. This one allowed for negative and positive values, right? And now this one only allows for positive values of zero. Together, they allow only for positive values of zero, but x cannot be equal to two. So that's the intersection. Any questions there, guys, before I proceed? Any questions there? Um, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, doc. Um, you uh, said hello, on sir. DOM F plus G is equals to um element of X such that um this that is if you put uh, you 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 firstly uh, put um column um a comma and then you change to end. So I the wanted end, to yeah. understand. Yes, I wanted yeah. to understand why okay, that's yeah. why okay. That. So 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 in mathematics, and means intersection, and means intersection. Or when we use the term or we mean union. So, so, so when I say intersection, I say X is an element of A and B. X is an element of A and B. So when, when you say this to me, if, if you, for example, so just suppose I have sets A, right? So I'm just creating some sets here. One, two elements, one, two, three. And you have a set B. Uh, and you have two, three. Now I ask you, what is the intersection of A and B? So you will say to me, the intersection there, what, what are the common elements of A and B? It's two, two and three. three. Can you see that? Can you see, you don't say two or three, you say two and three. Can you see that? The way you yes, speak, sir. you said two and three, you didn't say two or three. So that is intersection. Can you see that? However, however, when you speak of union, so, 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 hence I realized I cannot write comma. I must say end because this has a reference to intersection of the domains, which compels me to say end because I'm referring to those elements that are common to both A and B, that are common to both domains of F and the domain of G. So, hence I had to introduce the word end and erase the comma, okay? Because as you spoke also now, you said two and three. OK, right. Suppose now I consider the union, which we will come to at some stage again. I want to still talk about um, that, that um, question that was put earlier. So if you refer in our context of our A and B, or one, two, three, two, three, if you speak of the union now, if you speak of the union, A union B, so A union B. So let's, let's do the union now. Now the union, you speak of all. You speak of all. The union is one, two, three. You see? So this refers to all. It's the set of X. X an element of A union B. This means X is an element of A or X is an element of B or both, or both. Let me just say, let me just, this means X is an element of A, or X is an element of B, or it's an element of both. Look here, look, look here. One is not an element of B. Can you see that? One is not an element of B, but the union has one, because one is an element of A. See? And sometimes, two and three, look at two and three, it's an element of both. Hence, we say O. When it comes to union, we'll always use the word O. Because X can belong to both, or X can belong to A or B. But in intersection, we say end. That's why you can see the union looks different from the intersection. These refer to common elements, this one refers to elements that can be an element of X or element of B or both. OK, so that's why I was careful when I erased the comma and I introduced the word and. OK, 
because I realize mathematically I don't make sense. I have to write it like that. Okay. Right. So so I think there was a question. Okay. Was there, I think oh, some... Okay, so it wasn't a clean thing. It's my fault, it? It wasn't a question. I was just asking if when I have a recording because my network is so bad, I can't oh, see okay. anything that you're writing. Okay. Okay, I think with that three, you, with, yeah, you should have uh, Ms. Ms. Prem would be the most appropriate person to talk to, and you can send an email also, right? She's the most appropriate person oh for the recording. Okay. Okay. So, as, as, okay, if coming back to your, to your example, so if I write who, who, or if I write like just one number, A is an element of this one number, because one, if who, A, it's include one, two, three, and B, it's include two and three. So if I write, instead of O, if I write just one, will that be wrong? For, and for not what include I'm, two and three. Or for the union, though, that will be wrong. It will be wrong. No. So I have for to the, include all the numbers. Yeah, for the union. It's the numbers that are elements of A or B or both. Okay? Uh -huh. right. So that's why you'll see two and three. Two and three, they belong to A and B. One on the other end belongs to A, but when I have the union, I must combine all of them, okay? The union means you're combining them, okay? okay. Right. Unlike intersection, intersection refers to common to both A and B. It's common to both, so that's why we say and. Even when we speak, we say and. Okay, so it's just it's just mathematical logic. That's their jargon. Right, okay. So, so maybe, uh, I think you guys are fine, so you have that domain now, it makes sense. So x is greater or equal to zero. However, there's a proviso. X is an element of all the real numbers. X greater or equal to zero. The proviso is that x cannot be equal to two. So immediately from this domain, the negative numbers are not there, unlike in the case for the domain of f. So immediately with the intersection, looking for the common elements, it eliminated the negative values. Uh, what the domain of f prohibited. This one doesn't prohibit in the intersection of both domains. Now, okay must be aware of that. Let's look at the difference of the two quickly. Let's look at the difference. Uh, so, um, so let's call this it's still part of that question A. Eh? So let's look at the difference F minus G, F of X minus G of X. So F of X minus G of X. So it is one over X minus two minus, what was that, square root of x, eh? minus square root x, right? So again, you guys, uh, you can see, you will notice here, if I speak of the domain of say, the difference. Say, who 1 over x minus 2, it's square root of x minus 2. No, no, I remember I said, let's look at this one, it's simpler, okay? I will discuss that case again. Remember, yeah, I, I amended it. I erased. Maybe that was the time when you couldn't see the screen, perhaps. Remember, I amended this. I took the square root away here, yeah, okay, under in the denominator, okay? So that's why we totally looked at those things. G, G was square root X, and F was 1 over X minus 2 now, okay? Right. So I will look at that case again separately. It's slightly more complicated, but uh, you deal with it in the same way. So the domain of the difference, we know this domain and we know that domain. Yeah, x not equal to, yeah, x greater or equal to zero. I hope people, you can see that those that doesn't have a bearing on it. The domain of the difference will be the same as the domain of the sum. I hope you can see that. It will be the same as the domain of the sum. So again, I will say x greater or equal to naught and x not equal to 2. There's the set of x an element of the real numbers, such that x is positive or 0, and x is not equal to 2. So there's no change in that one then, okay? Um, let's look at the product. Let's look at the product. Let's look at the product there, okay? So for the product, if I multiply f and g, so f of x, times g of x, let's multiply them. What we see is the square root of x 
divided by square root of x minus two. And you guys will see again, you will see again from this, it's the same thing, it's the same principle. The one that brings about the change is the quotient. But let's look at the product. The product, I claim, that intersection of those domains remain the same like the, previ like the previous two cases, okay? The set of x greater or equal to zero and x is not equal to two. Let's look at the quotient. Let's look at the so quotient. So you made a mistake, say so the f times g, um, it's x all over, you, you wrote the square root same. It's oh, two. again, eh? oh, I'm still thinking of that previous one with the square root, sorry. And I want to discuss that one, actually. Thanks for that. Eh? Thanks for that. Great. Okay. And I, I want us to discuss this. I'm rushing towards that one now. I want to maybe create another thing and ask another question quickly. Uh, especially maybe just looking at the intersection of that domain of the sum on the difference, something like that. That's why I'm, I'm okay. just thinking. To, okay. Uh, for the domain of g of x, for the one that says f, f at x minus g at x, is it the same? Also? Yeah, it's the same, yeah, the same. Okay. Same domains, yeah. Uh, exactly the same. You can you can test it and check. You will see there is no bearing. Uh, the sum and the difference in this case happen to have the same domains and the product have the same domains. You will see there is no bearing here. If you play around with numbers in there, if you test various values for x here, you will see that it remains exactly like the previous two cases, the sum and the difference. It remains exactly the same. It will not have a bearing in that function. You can see here, x in this one, x cannot be equal to 2. In this one, x must be greater or equal to 0. So therefore, this applies. Let's look at the let's look at the at, at the quotient now. F of x divided by g of x. Right? Let's look at that. So let's write down that function. So this function, um, so it's f of x divided by that, right? So there's f of x. I'm dividing it by g of x. What is g of x? Square root of x, right? And now I take the reciprocal of the denominator, and this is equal to 1 over x minus 2 multiplied by the square root of x. Right. So there is the quotient function. I can call it h of x equal to f of x over g of x. Okay. Now let us try and get the domain of the quotient. Let's get the domain of this quotient. Now let's let's ponder this one carefully now. Let's see. So both are in the domain now, right? Both are in the domain. Yeah, well, x cannot be equal to 2, otherwise we'll divide by 0. And x cannot be equal to 0 too. Can you see here, guys? So we don't include zero now. Yeah. We don't include zero. Okay. In, in fact, x must be greater than zero here because we can't have a ne negative square root. For this one here, we do not allow x to be equal to two. Yeah, x can no longer be equal to zero. Yeah. Right? So the domain of the intersection now, considering all those things, is the set of x such that x is greater than zero because that square root function now lies in the denominator. So it's no longer it's no longer allowed to be possibly equal to zero. It must be strictly positive. X greater than zero means strictly positive. And the other condition, and, and x on top of that cannot be equal to 2. If x were 0, then you'll have division by 0, which is not allowed. And if x were 2, you'll have division by 0, which is not allowed. Okay. And of course, we don't include negative numbers under the square root. Therefore, x has to be strictly positive. And on top of that, it can't be equal to 2. Look how that domain differs now from the previous domains. 
the previous domains included the zero. Previous domains included the zero. They included the zero, the previous domains. Okay. Right. There is it. However, with this one, it does not include zero and still does not include X. Okay. That's the Tim, can I please have uh, ask for those few notes we, you pay your road, sir? You saying? The, the, can you please um, share the, the screen here you wrote your notes then? Oh, okay. okay. Uh, is it uh, this part here? Are you talking about those notes there that I just... Which, which ones in particular? As I go down on the last... Uh, last? Go up there, go up there. Up, 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 so you go up further, okay. The, you said um, the algebra of functions and those notes there. Yes, these ones. These ones. Up. up, okay. Up. Uh, are you talking about that? Uh, no, up, sir. This is an example, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, this one, sir. You see there, you see there, the g of x can be zero. Can you see that? Yes, sir. The denominator function. So it's consistent with our definition, okay? It's consistent. Consistent, okay? Well, it's consistent with the algebra of functions. Then the functions are defined, the functions, the sum, difference, product, and quotient are defined as follows. In our last case, the quotient, we also had that cannot be equal to zero, which was very consistent with, with, with that case. It says x greater than zero and x not equal to two. So it happens, okay? All right. Um, I wanted to ask you, Okay, um, you know what, guys? Let me let me now give you an example. Let me still keep the square root of x as g of x, and let me now uh, do this. Let me do this. Let's let f of x equal to one over the square root of x minus two. Now, okay? Let's see what will happen in that case. So I'm going to change this here. I'm going to call this my example two. Okay. I'm going to call this my example two. So here we're just establishing what the domains are and so forth. So for my example two, I'm going to keep g of x as the square root of x. And I'm now, in, now, now going to introduce going to introduce f of x equal to one over the square root of x minus two. Okay. So just bear with me there, guys, if there are no questions. So let's see, there's a new complication now that arises. Okay. Let's see. So let me call this um Example two, uh, just just example. It's my own example. Okay, so uh, let me just call it example. So further illustration. Okay, let me just call it example. So now, now we consider, and now we have. Let me call this. Let's say f of x. It's fine. It's another example. Suppose f of x now is equal to one over the square root of, let's say. Let's see what would have changed now if I introduced that. Let me keep that. And uh, g of x. And g of x equates to still there. So now the only complication we introduced was a square root in the denominator for f of x, OK? OK, let us get the domain. So, 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 so let us write down f of x plus g of x. So we want the domain of the sum, but let's just find the functions first, okay? It's not nicely done there, guys. Sorry, guys. It's one over. Sorry for that. And then plus the square root of x right okay so we can keep it like that we can make it one it doesn't matter it's it's okay uh we can multiply that out it's up to you how you want to do that um so 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 if you really want to maybe simplify further it's entirely up to you but this is how it will look like
but uh, if you write it like this, it's sort of uh, it's sort of so I'm multiplying square root of x times. But remember, if I say square root of x times square root of x minus two, I'm actually just doing this. Which gives you x squared minus 2x, OK? But I don't really like uh, writing it like that for now because it seems to obscure what values x can assume and, or not, OK? So I don't really, I won't advise you just to go write it like that. I would rather have you keep it, keep Doc? it like this separately, OK? Doc. OK. Um, I got lost at um, your first step at x squared minus 2x. How did you do it again? Oh, OK, no, it was just uh, look, I mean, uh, that's why I didn't want to go to this, but it's fine. So what I did was if 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 really you feel like you want to write these things as one term rather than as two terms. Uh, which I don't in this case recommend. So what I what I would propose is the following. Let me try and explain it to you. OK, so I asked what is the LCD? That was my first question. Of course, I, I realize it's better to stop right there where I am now. Rather than going on, but but let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did. Because I I realized that writing writing it out like that and getting the LCD obscure certain features of the domain. So I would rather have you keep it like this, but this is what I did. This is what I did, and I'll come back to that. So I ask what is the LCD? Square root of x minus two. Right? So square root of x minus two goes into square root of x minus two. Once, one, one times one is one plus. Then here I've got a one. One goes into the square root of x minus two, square root of x minus two times. I don't want my pen is doing this now. Let me just do this guy, sorry. Just, let me just extend this, uh, this fraction line. Okay. So, so. So, so then one goes into the square root of x minus two. Well, square root of x minus two times. All right. Uh, times the top one, which is square root of x. All right. And then what I do is I just put them under the same. I just put them under the same um, under the third. I put them under the third. So I just said, but this is, I can just put them in the square root of that. And I say x times x minus two. And then keep that there. But I realize that writing it like this will obscure certain things for me. I can't nicely see what x can't be and can be. So I, that's why I propose. So when you multiply that out, you get x squared minus two x. That's where I ended up. But on reflection, I I thought it better to leave it like this. Okay, um, that's that's what. Ba but basically, that's how I got to that step. Guys, I'm competing with the child here now. Can you guys switch off the microphones, perhaps? Muted, Doctor. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks. Otherwise, it's just interfering with whatever little concentration I've left. Okay. Uh, but that's that was that. Okay. But uh, on reflection, I don't want you. I would I would recommend that you don't write it like this, uh, because it, it it doesn't reveal. Uh, it obscures other features pertaining to the domains, etc. Okay, so I won't recommend this. I just thought maybe I could get to a simpler state, but now I can say I came to a more complicated state. But anyway, be that as it may, uh, let's look at this. Let's let's try and get the domain of. Uh, Let's try and get the domain of the sum quickly. OK, question now, question. Let's look at the separate domains. Let's look at the separate domains. For this one, clearly, x is greater or equal to 0, right? For this one, yeah. For this one, we said, we said x must be greater than 2. Do you agree with that, guys? Yes, Doc. Yes, sir. I think that's how we started off before I changed everything again, right? I think we were in agreement on that, OK? Um, can you see if we didn't have the third in the denominator, if we didn't have that square root sign in the denominator, 
the only condition was that X should not be equal to two. But now we are more restrictive. We, 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 we say that X must be greater than two. Why do we say that? Um, because uh, it's a square root graph. So. The square root function, and it's positive or zero. But if, if it is zero, then we divide by zero. So we cannot have it equal to two. Great, thanks for that. Okay, great. So I think everyone should be in agreement with us uh, who sees that screen and who listened to our previous analysis, how we came to this before I changed everything. Yeah, I think everyone cool. should agree with us. Yeah, okay. Yes. Right. Now, do you agree with the following now? Remembering, bearing in mind this, the notes that, that the previous person referred to. Bearing in mind the notes, and, and uh, it says, and, then, and I like what he said, he wanted to go back to this. He says, for the sum of F and G, the domain is the intersection of A and B. Okay? And, and, then, and then from here, I will try and introduce the union to show to, uh, there was one person, I think it was Mohalia, that spoke about the union. I wanted to see how that union impacts when it's uh, an, a, a, a union. I wanted to see how it impacts on the domain, how it can't be the union, okay? So, so the domain is the intersection, is the set of X which belongs to both A and B, which will make that uh, domain of the sum meaningful, okay? So it's the intersection of the two domains. So the commonality, the common axis. That's why I say end, end. Okay. So you mustn't forget that, guys. In mathematical logic, that's uh, okay. I went too far. So that's where we are. Now let's get the domain of the sum. Domain of the sum is equal to set of X and element of R, set of X and element of R such that, of course, we're speaking in the context of the real numbers, so I don't need to say X and element of R all the time, okay? We're not speaking of complex numbers in this case now. Right. Can anyone tell me what should follow after this, guys? Anyone? After the such that. So it's the set of X such that. Remember, I can use the vertical bar or the or the colon, right? So such that. What must happen here? Can anyone tell me what must happen here? Um, sir, can I try, sir? Yes, yes, you may. Um, X is uh, it's, it's greater than two, sir. Great, 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 great stuff. Because where do they intersect? They intersect. If you look at if you look at the domain of G, if you look at the domain of G, this is G. If you look at its domain, its domain will look something like this. Uh, it will be like this. It will go on x greater or equal to this is zero, right? It will go on. This is the domain of G. It will go on and on and on to the to the to the. Uh, as you look at the screen to your right hand side, it will go on and on and on, and it's defined at X. If you look at the domain of F, it says X must be greater than two. So if two lies there, and then X greater than two, and it intersects, it intersects X greater or equal to zero. It intersects it when X is greater than two. There's the intersection. These points here, they are common to both. Because remember, this goes on and on. They are common to both. This is not common here. This is not common. Whatever belongs to two and less, it's not common to those domains. And he correctly said, who was, who was providing this answer to me now? It's Mr. Okay, thanks, Mr. Rosie. And he said, X has to be strictly greater than two, which I agree with him. Because there is no intersection here happening. The intersection happens after two, right? So that's what's happening there. Okay. Any questions there, guys, for clarification? Any questions? 
Any questions, guys? No. Okay, great. Right. Can I hope you guys can see that the difference will be the same. I hope you guys can see that the domain of the difference will be the same as the domain of the sum. Right. I hope you guys can see that, that the domain of the difference is equal to the domain of the sum. And the domain of the product, well, if you look at the product, let's look at the product with you guys. Uh, I anticipate, let, let us look at F times G. Let's look at F times G quickly, guys. Let's look at that, see what happens there. So um, the domain of the product, the domain of F times G. Well, well let's first write down what F times G is. Sorry, guys. I was just, I was just jumping the gun. So, so, sorry, guys. Let me just... We just put the line here. Uh, so let's just get F times G quickly. Ah, sorry for that. I'm jumping the gun. F of X multiplied by G of X. Well, what was it? One over the square root of X minus two multiplied by square root of X is equal to the square root of x over x minus 2. Right. Right. Let's see. So I didn't want to for I didn't want to forego this conclusion. Um, and uh, but I hope you can see certain features coming up that remind you of the previous situation. Um, so I've now um, I've now, okay, let me, let me allow you to think about this, guys. Let me just go to the, just go nature's calling me quickly. I want you guys to figure that one out. Just give me half a minute, okay? So, half a minute, guys. Okay, guys, what's the verdict there? What's the verdict? Anyone would like to venture uh, an answer there? And I don't want the same people. Please, guys. So, Dogozizi, I don't want you to say anything, okay? Right? Guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can talk. Great, great. I don't want you to say anything because you've contributed sufficiently. So I want other people to apply their minds now, okay? What do you propose is the combined domain, the domain of that product, okay? I hope you guys understand how I got to this, eh? I hope you understand that. It's a bit like this. Let me explain to you what numbers. If I say to you 1 over the square root of 16 times the square root of, let's say, the square root of um, 100, uh, well, let me make it simpler. Uh, and I say to you, okay, uh, let me take a simple thing. One over square root of 16. So I just want I just want perfect squares here. So uh, can I say? And, and and it's something that you guys can work out anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, let's let's say square root of 100. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, it's one over four. Multiplied by 10. I'm looking at positive square roots here, guys, okay? 
I know that minus 10 times minus 10 is 100, and minus 4 times minus 4 is 16, and we get positive square roots. So this answer is 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2. But I could have just written this as square root of 100 over 16, which is what I did here. I can just put them all in the square root. Then inside there, well, I can, I can, I can possibly just say, uh, I can, I can reduce it further. If you want, I can reduce this further. I can divide both by, by two, right? Four, so I have 25, divide by four, and the square root of 25 is five, and the square root of four is two. So it's the same thing. So I was just showing you that whatever I did here is exactly as that on the far right, okay? So there was nothing spectacular about this. So now, question guys, what's the domain there? What is the domain of the product? Let me write it down here, because I, I'm, it's too dense there. So I just want the domain of the product, guys. Uh, you just get some space here. You guys can still see that. OK, so I want to be able to write this down. Look of X, elements of reals. Right, OK, so we can see. Uh, let me see if there are any responses. Um, there, there, there appears, there appears to be, okay, is it Tina? Can Tina, I try? Who, who yes, was first yes. now, Tina? Was it Tina or Laratu? I think Tina was first. Thank okay, you, Tina. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll do, uh, okay. Um, it will be x is greater than or equals to zero. She says, she says it will be x greater or equal to zero. That's what she says. I'm not saying it's correct what she's doing, guys. Né? I'm not saying okay. it's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, so can I? Can I disagree? Okay. Uh, I was gonna say x is bigger than two because then if x was just equal to or bigger than zero, then the denominator could be negative, and then we'd have okay. a square of a negative. OK, OK, great. I agree with you there. But what if the denominator and the numerator were simultaneously negative? What if, listen here guys, what if the numerator, of course, we can see there, x cannot be equal to 2. Can you see that, guys? x cannot be equal to 2. Otherwise, we'll have 2 minus 2 in the denominator. Can you see that? So the, the case of x not equal to 2, that is confirmed. x cannot be equal to 2. But I want you to appreciate that x, if x is simultaneously positive and not equal and, and greater than two, it's fine. Can you see that? Okay. If x is negative on top and x is less than two in the bottom, what what will happen there? If x is negative on top. And in the denominator, x is less than 2. What will happen? You'll have a negative divided by a negative, which gives you a positive, right? A positive. Can you? OK, let me substitute some values. Let me substitute some values. OK, suppose x is. Uh, so I x tried is, with negative 1, and it gave me um, square okay. root 3. OK, I'm, 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 I'm using x minus 3, for example, right? I'm using x minus 3. Can you see that? Can you see that, guys? Can you see? What is this? This is equal to 3 over 3 over 5, no? Can you see that, guys? Are you happy with that? I'm using values of x negative now. Yeah, 
So the only requirement there is that X must not be equal to two. Can you see that? So, so can I ask, um, if the okay. only requirement is that it shouldn't be equal to two, yes. um, if, for example, the... I, I the know what you're going to ask me next, I, I suspect it. Because if you put one there, then it's minus one, then it's the square root of minus one, for example, okay? Yeah, um, so then I was... But, yeah, yes, 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 good, good. So, gonna... okay, you can ask, you can ask. Is it who's speaking now? I was going to ask then it's Lato. I was going to ask if then you say that x has to be bigger than two or then less mm -hmm. than zero. Um, um, okay, good, good. I like I like what you said now. Okay, look here, guys. What she's saying, she's just refining my initial statement. I was going to do because I realized that you can't just say x uh, not equal to two. You have to introduce some refinements. Okay. Precisely for the example that I gave you here, look there, x is, x is less than zero, x is less than zero, and we got the square root of a positive number. Can you see the square root of three over five, which is fine, it's legitimate. But what she's saying, if we said x less than zero, if we say x less than zero, so say minus two, and minus two, minus two, we still have a positive number, right? We still have a positive number, one over four. Can you see that? And the answer is one over two. Can you guys see that? Yes. I'm just using numbers now less than zero now. Can you see that? Yes, sir. If I use numbers bigger than two, not equal to two, bigger than two or less than two, uh, and less than zero, you see? Because I've used that part which says less than zero. So I've used negative numbers. Now, if I use numbers x greater, greater than two, then everything is still fine. Because if x is greater than two, on top you'll have a positive number greater than two. At the bottom, you'll have a positive number greater than two. Can you see that, guys? So I want you to look at that, guys. If X is negative, everything works out fine. If X is negative, everything's fine. You end up with the square root of a positive number. If X is greater, so say, say, say X was one. If X was one, you'll have the square root of a negative number. If X was two, you have division by zero, which you can't allow. If X was three, you'll have the square root of a positive number. So the domain is this. And you guys must test it and just confirm with me if I've uh, exhausted that. Is the set of X X greater than two? So x less than zero and x greater than two. Right. right. So there is that. Um, this is a case of a union here. I have now a case of a union. I can't say and, I must say or oh, yeah. So let's just try and sketch this domain quickly, guys. Let's just sketch this domain. Because uh, I don't want to mislead you guys also. Because I suspect we're getting to an O function or statement. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I did. Ex I did exactly what the Ratu said, I think. The Ratu, did I, yes. did I satisfy what you said there? Is that what you aimed at, Lerato? Is that what you aimed at? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, good. Because we tried we tried values less than zero. We saw, ah, it gave us positive. And then we also said 
that, okay, what if X is also greater than two? We still end up with a positive, right? If it shows a value between zero and, if it shows a value between zero and two, we run into problems, right? So remember, I tried a one. I tried to say, I tried to say, ah, oh, let's put it, uh, let's put a one there, and then we ended up with the square root of a negative number, okay? We end up with the square root of a negative number. If I tried X equal to one, we end up with the square root of a negative number. If I put one and a half there, one and a half, which lies between zero and two, I also end up with the square root of a negative number. So we saw that X had to be negative for this to make sense. Then we have a negative divided by a negative, right? And we say that X must be greater than two. But when we draw this on the X axis, sorry guys, when we draw this along the X axis, let's see how this looks. Let's see how it looks. So let's put the point zero. There's the point zero and we keep it open. Say. Say. Okay. I uh, before drawing me. Yeah. Okay, I understand uh, when you say x is uh, less than zero, which is it's give us the positive numbers. And then Yes, yes. What about x is greater than two? Because like when I punch it into a calculator plus from thirty like I don't understand from X is greater than two. Okay, I wanna I just wanna erase some stuff here before I I, I want to listen to your question nicely. Okay, uh, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Uh, what I also want to do. Uh, I just wanna double check something. You see what I want us to do also, guys. I want us to get back to the separate functions. Uh, before I, uh, people, I'm not going to write this down as my final answer. Uh, before I entertain the last person, I'm not going to write this as my final answer, but we seem to get to something like this. That's where we're getting it, okay? But what I want us to do now is to investigate those two functions separately. I want us to investigate them separately, okay? So, okay. So, so it seems as if we are on this kind of trajectory, right? x less than zero, x greater than two. That's where we are. But it's fine for now. So I want to listen to what she says, and then I want us to dissect the domains of the square root of x and the domain of one over the square root of x separately and see what happens there, okay? Right. Okay, so what was the question? Uh, was the question? Okay, what was your question again? Can you repeat what you asked? Okay, I was saying, you see, x is less than zero. I clearly understand, which is give us the positive okay, numbers. Okay, okay. And, 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 and gives then, you a positive number, eh? Gives you a positive yes, number, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. And then x is greater than two. Like, I don't understand. Like, oh, because if understand. x is greater than two, if x is greater than two, use the number three. If x is greater than two, use a number, for example, 2.1 or three or whatever. Say three over... 1 is the square root of 3. Can you see that? Yes. Can you see that? So that's why the Ratu was saying something like that to me. But I have to consider that. Okay? Do you, do you, are you okay? Are you sorted now with your question? Are you sorted? Yeah. Okay. okay. So but now, let us look at these domains separately and let's look at the intersection now. Okay, guys? And then we'll stop there. Uh, let me just... Now, now before we, we write down anything related Anything where we commit ourselves to this year, right? Because we'll have an O year. There'll be an O year. There'll be a union year. Okay. So, so what I would propose is the following, and then it will come back to. Um, so the functions are defined as follows. So the product is the domain of the intersection. Um, so let us see quickly. So f of x. Let's get the domain of f. Let's get the domain of f quickly. Let's get the domain of f and, and then see what we come up with. Let's get the domain of f. f was this function. f was this function, guys. f of x equal to 1 over the square root of uh, x minus 2. And g was the function, 
G. I don't know what's wrong with this pin again, guys, because you'll see there's a pause when I. And G was the function square root of X, right? And then we multiplied them. Then we multiplied them. And this is what we got. And everything and everyone agrees that that's correct. OK, now let's get the domain of F. Can anyone tell me what is the domain of F? Not the product, just the domain of F. What is that domain of F? It's a set of X and element of the real numbers such that. Can anyone tell me what's the domain of F? Let me take this out in the meantime here yeah, because I don't want to commit myself to that. Okay, because. Right. Can anyone tell me what is the domain of F there, guys? Do we agree that is the set of X greater than two, guys? Set of X greater than two. Two. Are you happy with that statement? Does everyone, is everyone in agreement when I say that the domain of F is the set of X greater than two, guys? Yes. Is that fine, eh? Yes. For obvious yes, reasons. I do. For obvious reasons. It can't be two. It can't be two. If it were two, we will divide by zero, which is not permissible. If on the other end, it was a number less than two, if it was a number less than two, then it's another problem because we have the square root of a negative number. So it's the set of X greater than two. I think, I think there's universal agreement on that, okay? Right, let's get the domain of G. And here we have universal agreement. It is the set of X such that X such that X is greater, greater or equal to equal zero. To zero. Huh? Yes. Right. So um, so we've been playing around in this under this third. We played around with negative numbers. And we played around with some numbers greater than two, and it gave us, it gave us, uh, it gave us uh, something that's that makes sense to us. Okay. Okay, it made sense. But if we get the intersection of this, if we were to get by definition the intersection, so we have to stick to the definition. If we by definition get the domain of the product, which is uh, on the top left there, on the top right there, the domain of the product. By definition, is the intersection of the domains, right? Is the intersection of these two domains? We must intersect these domains. Is the domain of A intersection B? So here's A and here's B, right? So if we intersect that, we'll have the set of X such that X is greater than. Do you agree with me, guys? If we intersect that, it will be the same as the domain of the of the difference and the domain of the sums that we found up here. That uh, it will be the same as those. Oh, yes, domains. yes, we do agree. Right? Can you do you agree with me there, guys? No? Yes. You agree with me, okay? However, when we played around, you see, so. So what we said when we introduce a negative number, when we introduce a negative number for X, we said we have something like this. We have something like this, okay guys? We found this, but by definition, the way the book gives the definition, this is what we're supposed to get. But when we played around with negative numbers, we found that both the numerator and the denominator under the third, okay, we found, and, and, and look what I'm doing now, guys. Look what I'm doing now. I'm saying all. Now I'm talking of a union. Because it cannot be at the same time greater than two and at the same time less than zero. So it holds for X 
less than zero. So if X is less than zero, you can put minus one in there. And you can put minus one in there. So you can put minus half in there and minus half in there. You get a negative divided by a negative, giving you a positive. OK, if you put X greater than two in there, you'll have a positive divided by a positive. So we ended up with a union. This is what we call the union of sets. OK, we call this a union. Um, so so this part is in agreement with that part here. OK, it's in agreement with that part. Ah, sorry, there, guys. Two. But by definition, what they require from us, the way they define it, guys, uh, and the reason why this is more appropriate is because we cannot speak of the square root of a negative number on its own. But we found the quotient of two uh, of 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 a linear of two linear factors. We found the quotient of two linear factors, and we said, what if x were negative, right? What if x were negative? Uh, let's say minus three or minus one, and we found that we get, get the square root of a positive number. But on its own, this doesn't make sense because we can't speak of the square root of a negative number here. So for things to make sense, you guys must stick to the, the definition. This is the definition, the one that I marked with three. This is this would be the, the answer for the definition. We just explored it. But this year is a union. That's why I use O. So X is an element of A, right? Or B, but look at B now. B is negative, okay? X is less than zero. So what I would propose, guys, though this may appear correct, the definition requires the three, the three ticks, okay? Because the, the definition says, that the product of f and g in those notes, the product of f and g is the domain of the intersection. Remember, guys, this must be positive or zero. X cannot be negative there. When we combined it, we saw, OK, we can have a negative X and a negative in the denominator, and it will give us the required square root of a positive number. OK, so uh, but the intersection forces us, the intersection definition forces us to look at this. So I would then, because of the definition, it forces us that way. I would then take out this part here. I would take out this part here, okay? And then stick to the ones with the four. I'll stick to this one here. I'll stick to this as my final answer, okay? Right. Because we are consistent with the definition. Right. So I would say the domain of the product Sticking to the definition in the notes is equal to the set of X and element of real such that X is greater than two. Okay. So here are the notes. Let me just remind you of the definition, guys. Let's remind you of the definition in the notes. So just go back to the definition every time. I think we just drifted off the definition a bit. And then, uh, yeah. So here's it. We did this one. You guys can play around now, maybe with the others. We did this one here and look at the definition. Look at the definition. It says A intersection B. OK. Right. OK, guys, any other questions there? Any other questions? Um, so I did have a question. OK. Uh, I'll, especially, uh, Pran, especially sorry, Mr. Pran, can you give us one or two more minutes if possible? Is that okay? No problem, Dr. Okay. Yes. Okay, Dr. Zizi, you can go ahead. Sorry for that. Okay. Not a problem, Doc. Um, I, I've noticed that. Um, so I, I, I do I want to make a conclusion. I don't know if that conclusion is valid okay. or not. Okay. Um, so when combining two functions, um, yeah. it is best that we do not um uh, what can I say? It is best that we deal with the function individually and then come and conclude uh, with their own set of um, 
domains for example uh yes, yeah, yes, i yes, have yes, to yes, yes, i have good. to find the domain the, the domain good. of f first and then yes. find the domain of g good. and then good. those Look two uh, i can good. conclude it, is it fine like that or yes. i can oh, just right. simplify remember, remember what i did initially i started off with the product itself and then i looked under the third what is happening and i played we played around with positive and negative numbers numbers greater than two and numbers less than zero right um, we ended up with what x less than zero when we when we took it as one. And then I said, no, let's go back and do them separately, like you suggest. Let's do them individually. And then look at the intersection by virtue of the definition of the domain of the product, okay? Which which led us to this ultimately. So so you are right. Rather look at the functions individually, the do the, 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 the the domains over which they are defined. And then look at the intersection of that, of those two, where they intersect, rather than looking at the function holistically and say, okay, look here. Uh, otherwise, because in mathematics, you have to stick to the definition, okay? The definition is your guideline. So yes, you are right. Look at look at the functions individually, separately, okay? Good. Okay. Right. So um, the or the or part that we ended up with was a union b x less than zero or x greater than two because x cannot be simultaneously less than zero and greater than two. Okay, uh, uh, that's why that doesn't make sense. But that will be an or function. So that's where the union comes in now. Okay. Um, so in that case, uh, we call that the union of the sets. But when you go back to the original functions, that won't even make sense. That doesn't even give you that union. Okay. So yes, um, to easy. Look at them individually, separately, and then look at the intersection afterwards. So I think I agree with you on that. Okay. But it was nice playing around to check and see the contradictions that happened. Okay. Um, 